Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, everybody comfortable enough I can take my mask off because it just it gets very hard to hear uh, with the mask. I'll put it back on when we do the baptism, okay? Um, just welcome you here this morning. Welcome everybody that's sitting here in the church, everybody that's uh, on Facebook, and everybody that's on the phone, too. So, uh, cold morning out this morning, huh? Yeah, I got a little pile of moss as I, I get here about well, 20 to 7. I guess it was 10 below down there when I came through. So, uh, yeah, so it's pretty cold, but uh, nice and warm in here, huh? Yeah. Hey, so I, I do have some announcements, and I know that uh, this is more for the folks of the church here, but I know there's folks on the on the screen as well as on the phone here, so we do need to do. Um, just uh, remember tonight at 6.30, is the Teen Sunday School, and that's Zoom, and you can get all the information there. And tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, there's a prayer show meeting. That's going to be over at Mark's house. Uh, Wednesday, 6 o'clock Bible study. That's going to be here and on the conference phone. And then following Bible study, you know, there's a PPR meeting. That's going to be the same way, in person here, as well as on the conference phone. Next su Sunday, no, wait a minute, let me back off. Well, I want to save the meal for last. Next Sunday, um, the youth are going tubing out at Blue Knob. Um, it's going to be three to five. I believe they use, they moved the tubing thing up to the top of the hill. It used to be down the bottom. I think it's up the top now. Uh, between three and five, uh, we're going to meet up there. Rebecca really needs you to register by the 25th if you're going to bring you. So. Uh, if I go, I'm sitting in the lodge and drinking hot coffee. Because uh, I'm just not going to go down over the hill in the two. But anyhow, um, and looking a little bit farther ahead, on the 13th, uh, uh, we're going to resume our men's meeting. We're going to have hold it downstairs in the basement. Uh, we'll have a light meal. And uh, Josh and I have some good things going on there, Josh. So uh, we'll be talking all about that. Um, and also, too, I want to remind everybody, if you're contemplating uh, membership classes, please let me know as soon as possible. Now, um, like I said, this is basically um, just from information that I need to share about what's happening here on the 27th. On the 27th, that's a Saturday, we're having an outreach meal into the community. Um, what we're doing is we're going to make a, a, a full-blown spaghetti dinner and take it out into the community. Uh, we have over 200 meals going out next Saturday. Um, and so there's been a lot of logistics into this. Um, if, if you're a part of the team that's cooking, uh, and you, this is really for a lot of folks on the screen, but anyhow, if you're a part of the team that's cooking, I think Vince said about 10, 10, 10, 30, be here Saturday. If you're part of that team that's making desserts, we have to have those desserts here by 12. Cards are the same way, the cards that are going in the thing. If you're part of the team that's packing, we have about 11 people packing, I think. Please be here by 1.30 so we can pack all these meals. If you are one of the delivery people, um, I need you here by 2 o'clock. Um, we're going to try to have uh, all the, the meals start to go out here by 3 o'clock. So, um, saying that, I have multiple folks that are delivery people. Um, I could use uh, two more males and one more female. I'd like to send everybody out two by twos. That's biblical and it's also safe sanctuaries. And so I'd like to send everybody that's delivering meals out two by twos. And so I could use uh, two more men and, and one more gal, and that would do good. Um, and also, too, a lot of the folks that turned in names, turned in names, and some of them had, a majority of them had addresses, which that's nice. But not all of them had phone numbers. And so <laughs> I don't know what to do there because I don't know who they are. And I don't know their phone numbers, and everybody has a cell phone now, so it's not in the phone book anymore. So if, if you have given a name for somebody,
please let me or Nancy Nadonley know if you know their telephone number. Okay. Um, and um, so I think that's about it as far as announcement. But boy, pray for Saturday, huh? This is a big adventure. And uh, I'm just tired of doing nothing. How many of you are tired of doing nothing? Uh, I'm just tired of doing nothing. I'm tired of the church not being the church. And, you know, I, I, this has nothing to do other than an outreach and just giving somebody a meal and saying, here, Jesus loves you, so do we. That's it. You know? So, all right. If there's no other announcements, Karen, could you bring us in? sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Good words to hear this morning. Well, why don't everybody just stand up? Now, usually what we do is we go and shake everybody's hand, give them a hug, but it is COVID season and all that, and uh, um, <laughs> we have to be careful. So, turn around, shh, wave at them, blow them a kiss. I don't care you know, really what you do with them. Just say, just say hello to everybody. Uh, if, does everybody have a, a, a song sheet? Anybody have to a song sheet? Okay, we're going to sing, uh, there's something about that name, I'm sure uh, most of you know that. So, uh, Karen, if you would. It's a great praise song. Thank you. 
How many have never heard that song before? Yeah, beautiful praise chorus. Uh, some of you don't know me as well as uh, others do. Love music. Brought up in music. Uh, Grove family. Um, this musicians. Grew up in church. Learned all those old hymns. I had I had a piano player uh, back in the day, back at my home church. And, you know, and I was singing. And I was like to sing and everything like that. And she said, "I'm not going to let you out of this church till you know every one of those hymns back in the." And I, you know, I, I thank God she did that. Uh, but this is a beautiful praise chorus. It's a relatively contemporary one here. Um, we're we're going to sing it again. And so now that you're familiar with that a little bit, but it talks about really why we're here today and what we're going to talk about today. So let's let's sing. <laughs> So we pray today that that word be heard and we be encouraged in that word today. For it's in the Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Uh, Tom Whitney, come on up here. Piper, are you coming too? Let me put my mask back on. We, I shouldn't say this, but heaven forbid that the bishop would see me without a mask on. Isn't she a peanut? <laughs> She's something. Uh, I, I'm, I rejoice in the fact that uh, there is new life, but I am so glad it's you guys and not me. <laughs> of all the things I get to do as a pastor, this is one of, one of the neatest things. That we rejoice as a family and also as a family of God uh, to bring this child into a body. A body of believers, a body of folks that are entrusted in her care. She's going to grow. And there's going to be things that she remembers in life. Now she's not going to remember this unless she has a really good memory. But I'll bet you she'll be excited when I put that water on her head. <laughs> but we get to be a part of this. And because this is such an important event in the life of a family, as well as in the life of a family of church, brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated in God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. This is all God's gift. It's offered to us without price. I have questions that are historical questions that I'm going to ask of you two and you. So, they are questions that are not to be taken lightly. 
On behalf of this whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? If you do, say you do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? If you do, say I do. Do you confess before your family and the family of God in this church that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you've put your trust in him and you promise to serve him with your, as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened up into all peoples of all nations, all races? If you do, say you do. This is a big. And this is what folks get tripped up on. And I, I really sincerely believe they manage the time. And then life takes over. And you forget your priorities. Will you nurture this gift that God has given you? Will you bring her up in the church? And by your teaching and by your example, that she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself and profess her faith openly and lead a Christian life. If you will, say you will. And by the way, this isn't in the book, by the way. <laughs> You're the big sister now. She's adorable now. She's going to get on your last nerves. <laughs> and, you know, you're going to say, because I was the younger one, you know, my brothers and sisters were older, and they always said that mom liked me best and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and you might hear something like that, but will you promise me that you're going to be a good big sister to your little sister all of her days? For you guys. You have family here that's blood. And you got family here that's the blood of Christ. You are going to influence this girl. You're either going to influence her for the right way or the wrong way. This world's changing, isn't it? Right before our eyes. In my 60-some years, I never thought I would see the things that's going on right now. Never. What's these two going to say? None of us has an idea. But what they do have is family. And you know, when I say this to a congregation, and I say this to family, I mean this seriously. Will you promise, not to me, because it don't matter to me. I'm just a local pastor. I come and go. But will you promise before God that you will, in all of your power, every way you can, be an example to this young lady so that one day she can be the woman of God that God created her to be? If you'll do that, will you say you will? I will do that. Okay, Stella, my dear. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> Some time back, we had a... Some time back, we had a few folks go over to Israel. And they brought me back the water from the Jordan. So, Stella, I'm running out of Jordan water. So if anybody goes to Israel, <laughs> bring me back some water out of the Jordan. But Stella this morning is going to be baptized in the same water that John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Isn't that cool? Isn't that really neat? Okay, Stella Wren. <clears throat> Stella Rankazel. In the name
name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll be out there to Yeah, people cry over my sermons all the time. Ask me to hold a newborn baby and feel the fire and joy she gives. Come on, I ain't got that. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because he lives. If you know it, sing it with me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Oh, this is the good part. Because I know, yes, I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. That's our mute button. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. What a joy that is. So we come into a time of prayer. Um, in all my days, I have not seen our prayer list the way it is right now. Uh, super long. Uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share every name that's on there this morning, but I am going to give you some updates on, on some of them. Um, Ray Bumgarner. Ray uh, suffered a slight heart attack. At least we hope it's slight. Um, he's going to have a heart catheterization tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Um, but he has other problems too. He has blood in his urine. He was supposed to have um, surgery on his bladder on the 4th. Um, that's going to have to be postponed until we get the heart uh, cleaned up. I was for the first time in a long time, now I don't even really know how long it's been, it's been a year I guess, able to go into the hospital. You know, we weren't allowed to go in before. They did allow me in to go see Ray. Um, I gotta tell you, the hospital's a mess. Uh, it, it was shocking you know, when I got in there. Um, um, they're, it, it's just a mess. Um, they're doing the best they can, I believe. Uh, everybody was courteous and everything, but uh, I'll tell you, it, it was a mess. Um, and so uh, I, I would ask your prayers for Ray and Joyce. For tomorrow, uh, for the capitalization, and pray that uh, nothing serious is there. Um, also, to Rebecca, <coughs> Rebecca Court's brother, Tim Free, talk was right down here. He's only 50 years old. Excuse me, <coughs> got something in my throat. Uh, he's down in Conmar right now. He's in the ER down in Conmar. They believe he had a heart attack also. Uh, so, uh, you know, please keep Tim and the family in your prayers. Um, Irene Byer, uh, for those of you that don't know the situation with Irene, she had a 14-hour surgery down in Pittsburgh. Uh, she's not been well. She hasn't been out of bed in a year. And uh, boy, that is one tough, tough old gal. Uh, Sis Byer said this morning during Sunday school, she is out of intensive care and in a regular room. Um, Wow, if you, if you really knew what all she had to go through to get to this point, uh, it's just beyond amazing. Um, Randy's sitting back there, his mom, Gert, is over at uh, Stacy, her granddaughter's house in Martinsburg. Um, Gert ain't doing too well. I don't want to, I don't want to say things that I'm not sure of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all I can tell you uh, this morning is Gert and the family need our prayers. 
Um, she's just not doing well. Okay. Um, and we have a long list of other folks on our prayer list. I, I can fill up a whole page this morning. Um, I have several folks that I can't tell you who they are that are in desperate straits this morning and really need prayer. I'd ask you if you could, if you could pray about this outreach meal for uh, this coming Saturday. Um, that, just that God would be glorified in all of that. Ask for prayer. The Bible tells us we're supposed to pray for our leaders. And I, I don't want to be political, and it's not my place to be political in this pulpit. Does everybody understand that? But some of the decisions that are being made right now not doesn't just bother me, it scares me. And I would just pray that uh, we would all, as a body of Christ, just pray for our leaders, that they would seek Jesus Christ. And that's just not in the top level, that's, that's the whole way down. And uh, for our military personnel, this has become um, you know, close to home for me. Uh, my granddaughter is down in Lachlan Air Force Base down in Texas. If you're not familiar with that down there, that's a city. It's not a base. I mean, it's a city. She's, she's starting training in, in a week and a half, different training in a week and a half. She actually has to be bused to get to the other side of the city or the base. But the only bathrooms that are working are in the dining hall. Can you imagine that? Um, and what a mess. And for everybody down in Texas, if you've seen the, you've seen the, the, of the news and all that, and for the tornado that came through Georgia, and just, it just, a lot of different things. But if you've used to be in prayer for, I know that uh, there are a lot of folks that are, that are really suffering. And I thought this morning, <clears throat> when I went to, out to take care of that old horse of Sherry's about 4.30 this morning, and uh, my beard and mustache was froze before I got to the barn. And we've been talking about this. I can't imagine what it would be like not to have a home this morning and be sleeping on the street. And I just ask that somehow, some way, and we have a family here in the church, the Lowry family, some of you know them. And you know that uh, Easton has uh, had issues since the day, day he was basically born. And that family has went through a lot, and Easton's just a miracle young man. Uh, they are facing another brain surgery for Easton. And that will be on April 15th. Now, the kick in that is, I mean, that's, that's bad enough as it is. Uh, but normally, John and Kayla stay in a Ronald McDonald house. And just the nonsense that's going on in this world today, because of this COVID thing, uh, since they have another child now, uh, they're saying they're not allowed to stay in a Ronald McDonald house, which I can't understand that whatsoever. But anyhow, uh, so they've had to book a bed and breakfast by the hospital there. They'll be there for at least four days if everything goes right. And so there's a box back here, um, and what we're going to do as a church, uh, we're going to ask that, that from now till they go to the hospital in April, that we could help put some donations in there, defer the cost of that, you know, they're going to pay over 100 bucks a night for a room plus meals. Any of you that's ever been to Pittsburgh to a hospital, if you don't go there with 100 bucks in your pocket, you're out of luck. And so uh, John and Kayla has been so faithful. And uh, I told them when I talked to them uh, that they were more of a blessing to us than we were to them. 
And so I just ask if you if you got a couple of bucks that you don't know what to do with. If you got a lot of bucks you don't know what to do with. Um, that's a really good cause and it's right here at home for a really good family. Unspoken, just great things. Everybody should have it. Let's go to the word of prayer. Is there any others? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is there any others this morning, Sharp? I just have two praises. Um, Ken and I finally got appointments for our COVID tests next Saturday, or shots next Saturday. And there's been so much snow this weekend. Ken goes out and does it, but the neighbor cleaned out our driveway three times for this week. That is a praise, huh? That's something else I should have said on, on the, for the prayer request to the, the whole thing about this vaccination stuff, you know, just, it's been, it's been crazy to me now. I mean, just, it's just not there, it can't get there, it could be there, it would be there, should be there, whatever. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you this morning for the, the, the praise of uh, baptizing Stella. It was a praise to me. Uh, Father, I just thank you for, um, the folks that are here that committed that they would be that example for her. Uh, we hold up all of those that we've mentioned here today, especially think of those that need that immediate prayer and everybody else that's on our prayer chain. We do pray for this country. We pray for our leaders. Pray that there would be a revival in the land and we would return to a God-fearing land. Uh, we pray for um, all of our servicemen, women, all the folks in the prisons that are doing so well, the teachers, the schools, everybody, the first responders, the trucks were out when I came through this morning. Uh, Father, for the activities we're trying to do in the church uh, and be in the church. And Father, for our, uh, all the things that are kept quiet in our hearts that we can't make known for everybody else. And this morning, Father, we pray for each other. And we pray for the word. And it would be a word that would come at a time when we need to hear that word and it would be a word that would uh, just separate our hearts this morning and so father as we prepare our hearts for worship today may it be with that prayer that you taught your disciples our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Well, Whitney, last week I forgot, uh, Whitney did the children's sermon last week, and I forgot about it until after it was over. So I'm um, doing better this week, Whitney, so you're on. Am I the only kid coming up? <laughs> so we have our children's message this time. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Have a sit down. Her sermons are usually better than my sermons, so you adults pay, pay attention here. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I feel like I just was talking to a few of you. Um, for those online, we are having Sunday school via Zoom for our elementary class. We get some good lessons in there, huh? All right, so this is, we kind of talked a little bit in Sunday school. What season are we in? Lent. Lent, okay. And what is Lent? No, we've discussed that one. It's not Lent. It's not Lent. <laughs> not Lent. And it's not what was on the news last night where the guy said he's given up food for beer. It's not. It's not. That's no. not Lent. No. June, what, are, what is Lent season? What is it preparing us for? Easter Sunday. Easter. Okay. And how many days do we have <laughs> in the Lenten season? Do you remember, Bella? I'm ignoring her because I know she knows the answer. Ian, how many days? 40. 40 days. Good. Okay. And why do we celebrate Easter, Dylan? Do you know who died on the cross? Jesus died on the cross, okay? So kind of what Pastor Tom was saying, a lot of people during the Lenten season, they use this time to give up something. Usually a bad habit, they give up chocolate, or they're giving up beer, or trying to quit smoking, or maybe stop swearing. They try to do things that kind of make them better, right? Stuff we probably shouldn't be doing the rest of the 365 minus 40 days a year. 
<laughs> right? So what I have, and you guys already kind of saw this this morning, and I told you I was going to give it to you, but I said I'd do a little bit of a sermon with it. These crosses that I'm going to give you, it's a Lent countdown cross, okay? Each day, it says you are to select an item from the 40 actions and complete, once complete, color in the section on the cross. And at the end of Lent, the cross will be a beautiful reminder of what Jesus did for you, dying on the cross. So there's a couple things on here we said that were pretty easy because we're kind of behind a couple days. But um, let's see. Smile at everyone. I think we can do that every day, not just one day a year, right? Take a nature walk. Um, I, my favorite, I said, was no complaining for the day. I think that should be on here more than once. <laughs> Hug a friend, okay? So instead of giving up a bad habit, how about we take Lent as a time to do good instead of just ignoring something or not doing something? Why don't you take Lent as a time for 40 days? It's 40 opportunities to do something good for yourself and for others. Okay, so instead of giving up something, let's give something. And that's some goodness in the world. Because the Lord knows we need some goodness in the world. The Lord knows we need to hug a friend. <laughs> we need to smile. We, you know, people are so angry. And so you can't see people's expressions with these masks anymore. And nobody looks at each other. And nobody acknowledges anybody anymore. Yes? Can you do more than one a day? Well, you, you have like five days to catch up on. <laughs> but you know, just do one a day and then color it in and then you can hang it up and it can just be a reminder of good stuff that you can do because Jesus did something good for us by dying on the cross so that we could all go to heaven, right? Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Thank you for all the children here. I thank you for sending Jesus to die on that cross for us and I pray that each and every one of us can go out today from church and do some good in the world, help a friend, help ourselves, and just bring a little bit of your light to this darkened world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate that we're uh did I turn it back on just Thank you. Um, really appreciate you to have children's message again. I must admit, though, I sincerely miss the days when every few of this church is full and that whole world is full of kids. Yeah. I, I pray that we can come back to that someday. Huh? Be nice. um, I'm only going to, I only took one verse to be my sermon today. It comes out of the book of uh, 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 12. And I invite you, we can't put pews, Bibles in the pews anymore, isn't that crazy? You know, uh, yeah, we're not allowed to have Bibles in the pews. It might be contaminated or something like that. Um, but anyhow, I titled this sermon, The Hedge. Um, and I think it'll be self-explanatory once we get in there. But uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, and we're going to read just one verse, and that will be verse 12. So... Give me a second to get there myself. Uh, we have a tradition in this church. I'm old school. Old school can be. <clears throat> uh, when we read the scripture for the sermon, I ask everybody to stand if you can so we have reverence to the word of God. Just one verse this morning. First Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Would you pray with me? Father, well, just ask this morning that you would take it right and provide this word with us today. I pray for everybody that's listening today by whatever means they're listening. I pray for these folks here, these folks that are on the internet, and the folks that are on the phone this morning. Um, and I just humbly ask one more time that you would take me out of myself. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I wouldn't say anything that is contrary to the Word of God. Would not allow the devil to execute his lies upon us this morning. And that nobody would be hurt by me saying the wrong thing. 
And so, Father, we just ask you for a blood covering of the blood of Christ this morning. And we'll give you all the glory for it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. <clears throat> we as a church, this church right here, this, this little country church, we have had the privilege of sending out uh, some of our sons and daughters in the military service. Usually when uh, somebody is being deployed, we have an anointing service. Uh, to anoint them before they go into service. Uh, and that's not the same type of an anointing service as when somebody comes that they're in need of healing physically. But when in that, in that anointing service for those that are going out, we ask God to put a hedge of protection around them. And that hedge is a twofold hedge. Uh, first of all, uh, inside that hedge, inside the hedge, uh, we ask the Lord that they would, that He would protect them uh, from the outside influences that would come in and hurt them. Okay, does everybody understand that? But then also, that that hedge would restrain them from uh, wandering outside of that hedge and doing things that are against the will of God that will carry with them the rest of their life. Does everybody get that? That it's a two-sided hedge there. So in a community like this, like a farming community, a hedgerow was a separator. Right, Bruce, growing up on a farm, right? You know, that, that hedgerow would separate, usually like a field, something like that. In a more urban setting, a hedge is more of a boundary, a, a place between your house and the next house. Understanding a spiritual hedge of God, there has to be both. That hedge has to be a separator, but it also has to be a boundary. In just one verse, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Peter defines the teaching of a God hedge in that verse that we read there. I hope, my, my goal, if there'd be a goal here this morning, and I hate to set goals like this, but my goal here this morning, that I would pray that the same uh, Holy Spirit that inspired Peter to write this dynamic truth that he did in this one verse, would inspire our hearts so that we would know without a shadow of doubt when we left this building or whenever this phone came off this morning or whatever, that we would know what side of that hedge we're on. If you read the letters of Peter, now, I want to make something clear here before so everybody understands this. Peter's mentioned a whole lot in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The letters of Peter is not the same man. I mean, it's the same person, but it's not the same person spiritually as what it was in the Gospels, as what it was Peter. Peter was a changed man by the time he wrote these letters. He had seen Jesus rise from the get dead. Whoever said Easter there for Lent, that's, that's, that's our goal in Lent, to prepare ourselves for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter had seen the risen Christ. He had seen Jesus Christ ascend into heaven. And then on the day of Pentecost, Peter experienced the filling of the Holy Ghost in a way he never did. He was a different guy. You can't not know Jesus and not be a different person. Because if you're the same person after you've said you've known Jesus as you were before Jesus, you really don't know Jesus. And Peter's a different guy. So he writes these letters with a whole different intent. And if you read those letters, you would be very hard pressed uh, not to get that what the center of God's head is, both in Peter's mind and in the doctrine of the Bible. That hedge center is Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to say this as kindly as I can. If your soul's at odds, with Jesus Christ this morning, you're on the wrong side of the hedge. I don't know how else 
I'll say that. If yours not, if your soul's not at peace with Jesus Christ this morning, you're on the wrong side of the head. Uh, whether in his writings, whether Peter wrote about the church, whether he wrote about the family, whether he wrote about marriage, um, uh, false teachers, even the devil himself, Peter's answer for every problem in those letters is always Jesus. And in today's text, that, that one verse, he doesn't hold back and he doesn't pull any punches. And he says, when it comes to Jesus, you're either in or you're out. And there's nowhere in between there. It said, if you listen to lies long enough, you'll begin to believe them. Everybody get that? If you listen to lies long enough, sooner or later you're going to start to believe them. Well, there are folks who believe that they can have the blessing of God and still live outside of the hedge of God. That won't happen. Um, and not according to Peter, nor according to the Bible. There's three parts to this one verse. Two of those parts are for folks that are living inside the hedge of God. The last part is for those that are living outside of that hedge. So that's what I'm talking about today, just very shortly. These three <laughs> parts. Uh, the first one in the King James, you know, I am old school, I, I read from the King James, so it's old English and I get all that, but that's okay. Um, first one's the eyes, eyes of the Lord. <laughs> I imagine some of you had someone in your life in my case, it was my mother that said something like this. Remember, whatever you do, God's going to see you. Did anybody have that lecture before you left the house other than me? Sure. You know, I thought it was nonsense when I was a young man, <laughs> but today it's true. God sees everything we do. Peter reminds us that Jesus always watches over everybody, but he really watches over his own. And even when it seems like he isn't watching, he is. I've loved music from the day I could sing and play an instrument. And I love it all the more today. Justin, you want to get that close there? There's a song out there, I've played it several times when we had uh, the service is outside during the summer. Um, it's by Zach Williams and Dolly Parton. It's called There Was Jesus. Um, I chose not to show it on the screen. I hope Facebook doesn't cut us out. They do that periodically. Uh, I chose not to show it on the screen this morning, the video, because I want you to listen to the words today. So Justin, if you would, could you play that? You know, I, 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 as I get older, I guess I, my, my son says I've turned soft. Um, maybe he's right. But uh, I get emotional when I hear that song. Because I've lived that. And I've come to understand that no matter where uh, life has taken me, Jesus was there. And so I could not give you a stronger argument this morning for living inside the hedge of God than that. There was Jesus. So no matter what happens, his eyes are always on his own. Secondly, this morning, it's called the ears of God. Uh, we're a church here this morning that has witnessed the power of prayer over and over again. At times it's been hard for this preacher to learn this lesson, but it's a true lesson. Never give up on Jesus, never come out in situations that seem impossible. Never count out Jesus. I believe that God hears all prayers, I believe that. But Peter tells us in this verse here that his ears are open. You know, I like to underline things. If you've heard a Bible or you want to go home, look up that verse, underline it. 
His ears are open to the righteous, to those that are inside of his head. Perhaps the greatest testimony this church has right now is that uh, to this community and beyond this community that we are known as a praying church and our prayer list reflects that. Well, that testimony is only as good as long as we stay inside the hedge of God. The moment that we move outside of that hedge, that testimony fails. That's for us or the church. Jesus told us, don't pray as the Pharisees of his day prayed. You know, they, they wore elegant clothing, long robes, spoke in, in uh, big long words. And, you know, what their prayer was was to impress people how much they knew how to pray. Those kind of prayers have no power. And they're not open to the ears of God. And so I just have to ask myself sometimes, why when we have seen the power of prayer so dramatically and known by his word, the Bible, that our prayers are open when we're inside that hedge, why would we ever choose to live outside that hedge? I had a conversation with a young man this week. I basically said to him, what's God got to do so that people realize they need God? Does that make sense to everybody? What does God have to do so that people realize how much they need God? What's it going to take? As one who has lived on both sides of the hedge, and I have. I've lived on the outside of the hedge of God where I shouldn't be, and I've lived on the inside of the hedge. It's a mystery to me why anybody would choose to live outside of that hedge. But the cold fact is that some do. And that brings us to my last point this morning. This is the face of God. It's what, uh, what Peter says. He says the face of God is against them that do evil. My wife and I, Sherry, have been reading the Old Testament afresh. <laughs> Read it again. Try it sometime, it's a rush. I don't care how many times I've read the Word of God, when I read it afresh, it, it, it speaks new to me. The Old Testament is basically this. It's a testimony of the consequences that can happen when you live outside of the hedge of God. Peter says that the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. There are evil people out there, isn't, isn't there? Yeah, I'm just being honest with you. They're easy, to, they're easy to see. They're evil. They do evil things. And you know they're evil. But that's not the people that Peter talked about. <clears throat> if you look there real closely, there's a two-letter word before evil. And it's to do. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. There's a big difference between being evil and doing evil. Let me see if I can explain that. There are those who do evil who don't even know what evil really is because they've lived outside the hedge of God. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I told the first service this this morning. I, I made, almost made a critical mistake on my laptop this morning. I knew that there was a building in D.C. that that was engraved in, but I couldn't remember which one it was. So I typed into my laptop, what building in D.C., and boy, oh boy, the way things are going on down in D.C., uh, I thought, I, I, maybe, I, maybe Sherry has the CIA uh, at the front door this morning. But anyhow, after I got to the point of punching in the rest of it, it was okay. The CIA headquarters down in D.C. has that engraved in stone at first on their building. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus also said, I am the truth. We've said that many, many times here in church. So, you put them together. If you don't know the truth, Jesus, you don't really know what's a lie and what's evil. Because, see, you have to know truth before you can discern what's evil. See, uh, Jesus also said the devil's a liar. 
And I'm here to tell you this morning, he's good at it. And he's an angel of light. Jesus said that. What that basically means, he can take something that's evil and make it look good. Does everybody understand that? So, Peter tells us that the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. See, if you don't know the truth, and you don't know the difference between the truth and a lie, because you have to know the truth before you can know what's a lie, because if you listen to a lie long enough, you'll, listen, you'll begin to believe it. You can't, I've said this multiple times in church, so I'll say it one more time. You can't expect God to bless a mess that you've created because you're living outside of the hedge of God. I'll say that again. You can't bless, expect God to bless a mess that you've created because you're living outside of the hedge of God. It just won't work. I'm almost done. A hedge is meant to be a separator, like a hedge row is in a field. And it's also meant to be a boundary, like it is between houses, homes. Many times a hedge row, and those of you who grew up in farming, you've been around here or something like that, you understand that a hedge row between a uh, field is full of jaggers and thorns and, and things like that. Any of you ever had a, a rabbit dog? One of my rabbit dogs, uh, probably the best rabbit dog I ever had, I had to tape her tail. Because she'd get in those hedgerows and those thorny places and like that, and as soon as she'd pick up the scent of a rabbit, that tail would start going like this. And she'd come out of that hedgerow just bloody uh, from wagging that tail. And I'd have to take tape and put it around that tail so it wouldn't bleed. But my point in saying that is this, see, you don't want to be in that hedgerow because that hedgerow hurts, right? You get your thorns in you and all that stuff. Nobody wants to live inside of a hedge. You're either going to live on one side of the hedge or you're going to live on the other side of the hedge, on the other. And so there's a difference between the sides of the hedges. And when it comes to the hedge of God, just say it this way. When it comes to Jesus, you're either in or you're out. You can't stay in the hedge. There is nowhere in the hedge. You have to be in or you have to be out. So I pray today that the Holy Spirit, um, and only because of him, has talked to your heart this morning and told you what side of the hedge you're really on. Thank you for allowing me to baptize Stella. Thank you guys for coming this morning. I will learn next time that this happens, I will not make an announcement on the Sunday before church <laughs> and give people a good reason to stay away. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a good day to be here, hasn't it? Why don't you stand up? Karen, if you would. There's an old hymn. Nothing but the blood. It's one of the greatest hymns that uh, we have in our hymns. And it talks about the blood of Jesus Christ and what that blood can do. Let me get rid of this mic here for you. My wife tells me when I sing with a mic on, it's unbearable. Nothing but blood can do.
see where that says bright? Uh, the church has tried to become politically correct. What the hymn really says is white as snow. Uh, so when you get that, forget about the political correctness and sing it as it was wrote, white as snow. Okay, we're going to just do uh, uh, verse 4. Here. It's all Congratulate this fine 